How you doing there, friends? Welcome back to C Sharp in the Cards. My name is Jeff Fritz, and in this second episode, we're going to start to talk about the primitive types that are available to us in the C Sharp programming language. Now, before we go too much further, I want you to check out the links just below in the description so that you can get to the C Sharp in the Cards dot com website and you can download all of this material that you see here this is what's called a notebook you can open it in visual studio code or you can open it online with the binder service and it has not just text and links inside of it but it also has some code that you can tinker with and execute and learn a little bit more about how it works as we're going along in this lesson so Everything in C-sharp is an object, and there's 15 primitive value types that are available to us that we can work with in C-sharp. And you can take a look at some of them here in this grid. There's a keyword for each of the types, a full name, like system.boolean or system.car. Most folks just use the keyword when they're declaring and working with these types inside their code. And there's also a list of valid values for these different types. So Boolean, that of course is a true or a false data type. And then we've got some integer values here like byte or a signed byte. And then we've got some floating point types here, some decimal types, right? Values with uh, data to the right of the decimal like decimal, double, and float. There's car here, a single character from the Unicode character set that covers all the different characters that are available out there. Scrolling down, you can see there's integers, there's a long value, there's a short value. All of these are available for you to work with in the C-sharp programming language. Now, we can declare a variable that we want to work with of that type by putting the name of that type, int, and then the name of a variable. And you can name your variable whatever you'd like. It has to start with an, with an alphabetical character, so A through Z. It could be uppercase, lowercase. So in this case, I'll declare count of cards, and that's it. Now I've got some place that I can store the value of the count of cards in, in my deck of cards. Okay, that's, that kind of makes sense. I'm, I'm gonna store that and keep that information available. But a lot of times you actually wanna initialize that with a value. And to do that, we can initialize by using the equals symbol right after we declare the type and the name of that variable. So we can declare int count of cards and say 52. There's 52 cards in a standard deck of poker playing cards. I can declare a suit as a character there and assign it the value H. And characters are assigned with single quotes around that single character we're going to assign. So H, maybe that's hearts. We could also assign a C or a D or an S for clubs, diamonds, or spades. And I can assign a Boolean to indicate whether, whether my card is face down or face up. Okay, well, that makes sense. And true maybe is that it's face down. Okay, that I can follow along with that. And I can store, and now I know a little bit more about the set of cards that we're working with. Okay. Now, when you start working with larger numbers, it gets a little bit trickier to work with them for our human eyes to be able to read. So maybe we want to declare a million cards. Well, you can separate the digits by using the underscore character like I have in this code sample. And it doesn't matter where the underscore character appears in those numbers because the underscore is ignored in the language. The number is actually everything except for those. So when the C-sharp compiler comes along and inspects to look at these numbers, it doesn't matter if you put one underscore triple zero underscore triple zero, where we would typically expect to see commas. Maybe you want to list it as a thousand thousands like I did here in line two, or, or maybe you're just wrong and you want to list it like I have in the third line here as a hundred thousand tens. You can do that, but you would be wrong. I will judge you. You can do that. The C-sharp compiler will let you do this, but I will judge you and tell you you are wrong. <laughs> I kid. Continuing on here, though, you can also declare variables um, using hexadecimal or binary values. So 
if we want to take the year 2024, we can declare it in decimal as 2024. And I can also declare it in hexadecimal as 0x to indicate it's a hexadecimal value, 0x, and then 7 echo bravo like I did on line 2. Now, if you want to declare it in binary, you can use like I did here on line 3, and I separated each one of the um, each one of the values there with underscores. Makes it easier for me to read. Okay, not bad. And I can output that value. I can take a look at it here inside my notebook by just putting that value on a line by itself and clicking the play button here. And it shows that this year in binary, it's actually stored the value 2024. Cool. Tinker around with that. See what else you can do looking at that and playing with some of these values and what it outputs there. Now, if I continue scrolling down here, you'll see we can also change the value after it's already been initialized by assigning a new value by just placing the name of the variable equals and then whatever new value we want to assign. So maybe face down was true and we want to flip it over. So face down is now false. There we go. So we can do that assignment to take that action with our card. All right, we're going to change the state of this. So we want the computer to remember that now face down is false. It's now face up. Okay, we can store and work with that. Continuing on here, though, maybe you don't want to declare the type with your variable. It gets a little bit tedious to declare that, and some folks don't like to actually go through and specify all the types. You can also use the var keyword to force the compiler, the C-sharp compiler, to detect what type is being assigned on the right side. You can only use var when you initialize your values, like here on lines 1, 2, and 3. When you initialize, it will determine what type is on the right side of the equals and set the appropriate type for that variable. So we can use a little bit of code here like I have at the bottom, display and specify count of cards dot get type. What's the type of this variable? And you'll see it reports system dot double in this case. If I change that and I say, well, what about face down? Display that type and I run it again and now it tells me it's a Boolean. Tinker with that a little bit and see what you come up with. Finally, when you do use the var keyword, <clears throat> you can also force it to detect and use a certain floating value type when you do use a decimal place and start specifying some significant digits. So if you use a D, F, or M suffix, when you initialize that variable, you can force it to either a double, a float, or a decimal type appropriately. D for double, F for float, and M for decimal. So here, the angle that I've turned my card, maybe I've turned it 45 degrees like that, that angle, I can store that 45 degrees, then that might be important if I'm doing some sort of spinning card animation on screen. I need to store that angle that I'm displaying the card at as it spins. Maybe you're tossing the card across, uh, across the game board and you wanna store the spinning value right, the angle to turn that card, I'm going to store a 45 degrees there so I can specify 45.0 M so that it's precisely 45 degrees that it's been spun. All right, that's all the time we have for this episode of C Sharp in the Cards. I've got plenty more content coming for you. We're already planning and scripting episodes three and four Take a look at the website, csharpinthecards.com. If you like what you're seeing, if you want to catch the next episodes, make sure you subscribe to the channel here. Click that bell so that you know when you get notified of when there's new episodes being released. All right. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.